Hi, of 3.30, why don't we uh, get started. Welcome to the newly refurbished Spring Hill Suites in Eden Prairie. We retweeted these before and after pictures, what it looked like on the right of the screen. And now it's been uh, repainted. We have a couple of out-of-towners. I was going to point out the points of interest here in Eden Prairie. The hotel has these handy maps of Minnesota visitor fun. It's not a very big map. <laughs> There's stuff on both sides, though. This is the entire state, I guess. <laughs> For the folks who drove all the way from Pennsylvania, we hope you won't be too disappointed. But they're, they're moving on to the Black Hills. That's where we are. Some of the other points of interest here, neighbors across 78th Street are Cub and their parent company is across from NVE on Valley View Road, Unfi. Unfi was looking to sell Cub, so we on Twitter offered to buy it. <laughs> we thought there was synergy. We like Cub Foods donuts and cookies, and that's what we have here, and the cake is also from Cub. We did say that, as you can see, that NVE is a bigger market for donuts than you might think. <laughs> we do eat a lot of donuts. They never got back to us. I, I, I don't know why. That's over here, Cub, and then the iconic Eden Prairie water tower. The city of Eden Prairie tweets about the water tower, and they light it up different colors. Purple here for the Vikings, something. But uh, these two clocks have never been synchronized. So <laughs> most people don't notice it. It was driving us crazy. We make rotational sensors. We were thinking, well, you know, sensor here, sensor there. We'll sync them all up. The clocks will agree. We offered to do that on Twitter. And, well, we never heard back from the city of Eden Prairie either. <laughs> As I drive by, I noticed the clocks still aren't synced up. This was a huge snow mound in the Target parking lot. And as you can see, someone managed to get a Target shopping cart up there. So there's speculation on, on how they did it. But they're very creative folks here in Eden Prairie. And here you can see somebody trying to summit Mount Eden Prairie. And they were saying it could stick around until May. It actually stuck around until June. It's gone now. So this is actually a former point of interest. But if you want to see where it used to be, uh, there it is, or there it was. By the way, tweets like this got us the moniker of Minnesota's nerdiest corporate Twitter account from Kathy Grayson, who's covered us. This one she actually passed on was from Pi Day, which she didn't even know existed. I mean, who doesn't know that? Uh, well, she didn't. And we had a number of tweets on Pi Day and how important Pi was to some of our products. As you can see, we took it as a compliment. It's time to call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded, and we plan to make excerpts publicly available. Those of you who've, who've attended know that we have themes for each meeting. Last year, it was a return of in-person meetings, and we've had Olympic themes, cars, baseball. This year, the theme is artificial intelligence and automation. First, introductions. Employees and directors, Emily Curtin, who you met coming in, who's the inspector of elections. Emily's over there. Daniel Nelson, our Principal Financial Officer. Pete Eames, our Vice President of Advanced Technology. So you can ask him any tough questions. Terry Glarner, our Chairman. Pat Hollister, our Audit Committee Chair. Rich Cram, Director. And Jim Brackey, Director. You don't have to, <laughs> Jim is recovering from surgery and so we won't ask him to stand up. And our Auditors, Rich Lehman, our Audit Coordinating Partner and Brittany Hancock, our audit manager. We also have two out-of-towners. We appreciate them driving from Scranton, and we have plaques commemorating your visit to Eden Prairie and to the NVE shareholders meeting. They say, I came a long way for NVE's 2023 shareholders meeting, and all I got was this stinking plaque. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'll call on Emily to present proof of the due calling of the meeting, Emily. As of June 9th, 2023, which is the date of record for determining those shareholders eligible to vote, there were 4,833,401 shares of common stock of the company outstanding and entitled to vote. 
We have on file or a formal declaration that we mailed the notice of this meeting and the property statement to shareholders of record on June 20th, 2023. And a uh, report from Broad uh, Financial Solutions that our materials or notices of internet availability for the materials were sent to our shareholders who held their share of shares in straight name. The majority of the outstanding shares of common stock entitled to vote are required to constitute a quorum. Proxies indicating abstention from a vote and broker non-votes are counted toward determining whether a quorum is present. We have present today, in person or by proxy, the holders of more than 50% of the shares outstanding on the record date. Thus, we have a quorum. On the basis of Emily's report, I declare the meeting to be duly called and convened and competent to proceed to conduct business. Copies of the notice of this meeting and proxy statement are available on the back table if you, anyone would like to refer to one. As a matter of good corporate governance practice, each of our directors stands for election each year and we recommend and hold annual say on pay votes and we submit our auditors for ratification. So we have four items of formal business to elect five directors to serve until the next annual meeting of shareholders. Consider advisory approval of named executive officer compensation. The third is the advisory vote on the frequency of votes on executive compensation. Ratify the selection of Boulay PLLP as our independent registered public accounting firm for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2024. I introduced the director nominees and they're designated and listed in the proxy statements. No other director candidates were nominated. Is anyone voting in person? Okay, I don't see any indication. So if not, Emily, do you have a tally? Yes, the voting report shows the following results. With regard to item one, each director nominee received in their favor of the shares vote as follows. Terrence Garner, 84%. Daniel Baker, 95%. Patricia Hollister, 90%. Richard Cramp, 92%. And James Brackey, 94%. On item two, 95% of the shares voted to approve named executive officer compensation. On item three, 95% of the shares voted were in favor of annual say on pay votes. And on item four, 99% of the shares voted were in favor of the ratification of the selection of Boulay PLLP as our independent registered public accountant. On the basis of the voting, I declare that each director nominee has been re-elected, named executive officer compensation has been approved, shareholders favor annual say on pay votes, and the selection of our independent registered public accounting firm has been ratified. And they got the biggest mandate, uh, much, much more than me, uh, <laughs> not that that matters. Uh, we will file a vote report in a current report on Form 8K within four business days with the exact numbers. With uh, no other formal business, I declare the formal meeting adjourned. We'll go into the presentation. A tradition, as some of you know, is to have a person, or in this case, a deep fake person, read our safe harbor statement. We had Einstein read it last year, and um, as somebody asked if that was really him, uh, he'd been dead for quite some time, so, <laughs> so it really wasn't. This year, because the theme is artificial intelligence, the BARD AI engine helped convert the safe harbor statement to Shakespearean style. And we have a deep fake of famous Shakespearean actor James Earl Jones to read it. Here's the Shakespearean safe harbor statement. Hill and the charmers, that which we say, on time to come plans, beget as words, such as those recorded with what thou callest the SEC, including that which was given for a fortnight and two days past the hours of March. Fortunately, we don't have any lawyers with us today. <laughs> the artificial intelligence uh, chatbots have been in the news, and they're useful and, and surprisingly accurate, although not always perfect. I, I admit to being biased, so we asked the BARD AI engine why NB is a great company, and this is, the, this is the answer it came back with. It cited our track record. We certainly agree with that. Market leadership in Spintronic products. If we believe BARD here, uh, there'd be no need for this annual meeting since it thinks we're private. But the NASDAQ Stock Exchange begs to differ and we do pay them a significant fee to be listed. On the other hand, strong management team, well, we certainly agree with that. <laughs> we generated an official haiku for this meeting. It uses uh, This is Bing GPT-4 and it, it seems apropos. 
Hollywood sees AI and robots as characters and metaphors. There have been good robots, bad robots. Well, this is a, a spoiler alert, but that's a bad robot. If you haven't seen the movie, it, it, well, maybe not. But uh, good robots turn bad, and bad robots turn good. And that's how Hollywood sees them. But the way market researchers see it, they're going to need a lot of sensors. So that's what we care about. Over $100 billion worth of sensors in five years. We address this historic market opportunity with a unique technology called Spintronics. It's a nanotechnology that utilizes electron spin rather than charge to acquire, store, and transmit information. Here's an actual electron microscope image of one of our Spintronics structures. The critical dimension is this tunnel barrier thickness marked here. That is just eight atoms thick. If this was, uh, call it 35 centimeters on the screen for easy figuring, that would be 100 million times magnification of one of our structures, and a wafer would cover the entire Earth. Here's the blow up of it. You can see the actual molecular structure here, and the atomic layers, and the thickness of that barrier. The near-term opportunities aren't time-traveling robots or helping the Mandalorian. It's highly automated factories for the fourth wave of industrial automation. The fourth wave uses lots of sensors communicating with each other with a central control system to coordinate work more efficiently. These automation waves used to take 100 years. The first wave was in the 1700s with steam power. The second wave in the 1800s with electricity and then the third wave in the 1970s with computers. But we don't have to wait until 2070 for the fourth wave. We have a historic opportunity now with the expected growth and demand for sensors. What are the benefits of this technology? We have four main advantages that we summarize with the four Bs. That's boxes or miniaturization, bits or precision, batteries for efficient power conversion, brains for computing to allow sophisticated control, the demos we have here illustrate these advantages. The first demo is a TMR switch, which detects a magnet. Pete, did you want to show how that works? We have uh, two demos this year. Um, actually, both of them use that same uh, cross-section material we began showing. This is a low-power switch sensor. So it's also ultra-miniature, so it's actually, you'll have to come up and see it afterwards, but it's this tiny little speck at the end of the board. It's a low-power sensor. So uh, what's interesting about this is that uh, it doesn't have a power switch. It runs, this, this particular sensor runs on this tiny little battery here. And uh, it's a switch that's used to uh, detect a magnet, like the tiny magnet in your hand. When you put it close to the sensor, it turns on uh, the LED and it lights up. So again, uh, what's interesting about this extremely low power sensor is that it doesn't have a power switch. This uh, sensor will run on this battery for approximately 30 years. So you can come back in 2053 and we'll make sure that this thing is still, still running. This is uh, one, uh, going back to the four of these, it uh, fits well with the batteries and boxes and manages this extremely small, you know, low power. The second demo that we have is um, this uh, uh, musical uh, demonstration of MDE's angle sensors. So the way this one works is uh, it's a communication with a smart sensor that's again extremely small, but it communicates with a single board computer back here through an industrial interface called an SPI. So this sensor is used in industrial automation. In this particular demo, it's detecting the position of this pitch pipe here. The um, position of the pitch pipe is uh, communicated back to the single board computer, and you can actually use that position uh, to play music and, and uh, light up uh, the notes on the background display. So I'll give you a more extensive uh, display after the, the meeting here, but I'll turn it on just for a few minutes. So this is one of it, the smart sensors, so it feels to the brain's benefit and also the feels to the university. Thanks, Pete. A lot of technology that goes into playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. <laughs> our customers do some amazing things with our products, and we'd like to highlight three of those cool applications that we've worked on in the past year. 
this is from a paper by a group that's using our sensors to detect nanoparticle labels for biosensing. it's fast and it's sensitive the technology has been used for diagnostic medical testing, detecting food pathogens and early cancer detection there's a link to the full paper on our website. our parts are in a spacecraft going to europa, one of jupiter's moons, to assess conditions for life one of our NASA contacts reminded us that NASA provided research grants to NVE starting in 1990 to help us develop spintronic products and now they're being used for a NASA level one mission, meaning that they're required for successful completion of the mission's objectives. So that's one of the most demanding applications there is. This is supposed to launch in October 2024. We're hopeful that we won't hear on the news in October 2024 that the mission would have gone okay except for some isolators or something made by, <laughs> made by a company in Minnesota. It's a great validation of our quality and reliability in very harsh environments. An even more audacious mission is the Mars Sample Return Mission, and it'll collect soils and rocks on Mars and return them to Earth. It uses multiple spacecraft and a robot on Mars, and the mission will help prepare for human exploration of Mars. That is supposed to launch in 2028 and return to Earth in 2033, so a ways off, but they're already looking at the parts and building some of the uh, elements of the spacecraft. You can see the flowchart there, the complexity of this mission. It's quite an undertaking. They've described it as one of the most ambitious undertakings in the history of humankind. Turning to financials, we had a record-shattering fiscal year, record product sales, earnings, and cash flows. We also had a strong quarter, despite a semiconductor industry downturn, with sales up 23%. As this graph shows, fiscal 2023 was our second consecutive year of record profits. We're committed to maximizing shareholder value. Here are some highlights as shown in our proxy. Our total shareholder return with price appreciation and dividends was 57%. We had one of the highest dividend yields in the industry. We were added to the prestigious Russell 2000 indexes in June. To sum up, NDE has revolutionary technology. We have historic market opportunities and exceptional financial performance. I'll open the meeting to any questions. That's all the time we have for the Q&A. But uh, feel free to stick around. I think Pete and Emily will, will be able to be here to answer any questions. The board's going to have to leave. But we appreciate everyone coming. And thanks again for your support of MBE.